In my previous life, I didn't stop to see the sights as I had been on this trip. I would ride hundreds of miles without stopping and seeing things. I still love sitting on the back of a bike and watching the countryside rolling by. Usually, the ride from Silvis to Evora is only about 200 kilometers, or 120 miles. But in the small town of Torayo, I stopped to try out one of my camera mounts. It does make for some interesting footage, but the camera mount is super distracting, bouncing around in front of my bike. I didn't realize my riding around the town confused the Garmin, so I headed out the wrong way. It added an extra 50 kilometers to the trip. By the time I'd made it to Evera, it was later than planned and I was hungry. I snaked through the town and eventually came across the Prasha du Geraldo. Spying several restaurants, I decided to stop. Scattered throughout Evera is its renowned Roman ruins. Unlike the Roman bridges I'd seen so far, these are actual Roman buildings. It had been a long day, I was tired, and I just didn't have time to visit them. The Prasha du Geraldo was originally just called the Grand Plaza. It was renamed for Geraldo Gereldas, the commander of the Crusaders that conquered Evera and much of the Alentejo from the Moors in the 1160s. There was a triumphal arch here and other sculptures. The Christian rulers destroyed these after the Crusades to make space for the fountain and the church. On one end of the square is the Santo Anato Church, construction for which started in 1557. Guidebooks say it's worth a visit, but I didn't take the time to. At the opposite end of the square is the Banco de Portugal. Today, it's a bucolic square filled with tourists, but this obscures a more colorful past. For 200 years, this was the site of the regional court of the Spanish Inquisitions. Inquisitors killed over 22,000 people here. The most famous of these was Fernando II of Barraganza. King Zhao II came to power in 1481 after his father's death. Under his father's reign, the nobility of Portugal flourished. Zhao saw this as a problem and immediately began to take power from the nobles, including the ability to administer justice on their estates. The Duke of Barraganza wrote a letter to the Queen of Castile complaining of these changes. The king found out and had Fernando promptly executed and the family banished. Fernando did fare better than another duke that Zhao personally stabbed to death. Oh, and of course, they're all related to each other. Isn't Portuguese history great? FYI, the current duke of Barangonza is the heir to the Portuguese throne, so in the end, the family did fine. Alright, peeps. Well, a meal was had. Uh... Let's just say, yeah, a meal was had. So, I had a local thing, which, uh, I'll obviously flash a picture up there. It's bright green. Um, it's savory bread pudding. It comes from asparagus. They, ha they, they had on the menu a no asparagus version. I'll tell the asparagus story in a minute. But um, they were out of stock. I had the asparagus version because I was like, oh, I'll just pick out the asparagus. That's fine. Um, but as you can see, it is uh, not pick outable. It is mashed in there. And then the meat is pork belly, which I like pork and I like bacon, but I'm not a big fan of like pork belly because it's the fat. Like the fat has to be like cooked down, you know, crispy. And um, pork belly's never cooked that way. So I, I, I don't, I mean, I'm just, I'm a terrible Portuguese. What can I tell you? I'm a terrible Portuguese. I, it, it just, 
it's like the main seasoning is salt. I, these people conquered the world looking for spices and somehow their food doesn't have any spicing in it. Is it I mean, it, it looked like it had spices, but I gotta tell you, man, it tasted like the main thing was salt. So, um, I tried it. I, if you come here, definitely order, try it. Um, if there's like, you know, six of you or something, you might want to order just one or two plates. I don't know. And then see if you like it. You might order more. Um, I don't need to order it again. And then uh, for dessert, I had their layer cake, which is like a buttercream frosting. And then like, kind of like a gingerbread type dough or something. And if you know, if you like buttercream frosting, that's pretty much all you got to taste anyway. So... I feel like I've been at this intersection before. So, Evera, you're beautiful. I'm gonna come back. Not gonna have the uh, bright green um, bread pudding and pork belly. Let's see, I gotta tell the uh, bacon, I uh, know the bacon story, the asparagus story. So, before I get on the freeway. So, uh, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, uh, I decided to try to eat a little healthier. And to do this, I was gonna introduce more vegetables into my diet. And I'm a firm believer that you can eat anything on a regular basis if you just adjust to it. Like, you eat it 10 times, and it's going to be better and then the next 20 times it's going to be better than that and so on and so i'm like i can eat anything i just have to adjust to it i'm going to adjust to asparagus because that's the vegetable i'm going to pick okay so um i start eating some asparagus and i i ate asparagus for several meals uh, or, or over the course of a few weeks and I um, I went to a, a, a concert um, at a small venue in Minneapolis. Um, it was uh, the Varsity Theater, which used to be a movie theater, and it got turned into a club. And I think it was like Information Society or something was playing. Like this is anyway, doesn't really matter. I drank a ton of beer, and the next morning my ankle really hurt and my toe really hurt, and then. I was like, oh, I must have sprained something, done something. And and then the next day, my toe, like, I'm like, cut it off. I take it away from my body. It hurts so much, except when you cut it off, do not touch it because I cannot believe how much my toe hurts. And this was in the dawning days of the internet. Um, and I was able to do some research and I realized I have doubt. Like, the description for gout was drag a sheet across the toe causes so much pain that you just, it's unbearable. And I'm like, holy moly, that is the thing. Yes, that is me. I have gout. Now, the causes for gout are foods high in uric acid. And you ask, what might have uric acid in? Well, lo and behold, beer. I had had a lot of beer, and beer has uric acid, and beer is bad. And bacon, bacon has uric acid, and bacon is bad. In fact, most meats are bad. But also, asparagus. Asparagus has uric acid. And I'm like, okay, one of these three is not like the others. Like, am I gonna live life without beer? Probably not. I mean, I'm not going to go through, you know, gout every time I drink beer, but, you know, I enjoy a good beer. Am I going to live life without bacon? Hell no. Like, bacon is one of my greatest joys in life. But asparagus? Yeah, I think I could do without asparagus. So I cut the asparagus out of the diet. I don't drink a ton of beer, like, over multiple days. Um, and... I just you know, eat bacon like I always did, which is, I don't know, maybe, but it, I don't know what it um, And I had a few gout attacks, like, over the years. They've got 
much lower in intensity. And part of it is because I can recognize it early on. And then you just drink a ton of water and it flushes it out. And so um, I had, I now today, I did not even for the green bread to really worry about the amount of uric acid that was smashed into that bread. Um, so I don't really have to concern myself too much. Um, but that's the asparagus story. Uh, I don't hate asparagus. I just don't eat asparagus. Uh, by the way, asparagus, broccoli, all those kinds of things. Um, I am your guest. Avoid it. Let's see. Other than that, uh, I ordered half a bottle of uh, Vino Verde by mistake. I thought I was getting a cup. She brings out half a bottle. I'm like, okay, well. But I drank in moderation because I'm on the bike. And so I felt drink one. Um, the, that, then uh, I'll probably putting up some wrong footage. Um, hopefully that worked out well. There was an old man and an old woman. Saw me put the drone down. I saw the drone come up. And then uh, they were watching me intently while I flew it around. And then when it came down, they both breathed a sigh of relief. I think they thought something would happen. And so ends my weekend trip. I hope you've enjoyed riding along with me. I enjoyed the trip immensely and have had a great time researching to make these videos. Editing footage is still not my favorite thing, but I'm getting better and I'm happy with the result. Hopefully you are as well. As I mentioned, this was a trial run for my planned summer trip. Based on my experience this weekend, I'm looking forward to making the videos for that trip. So if you like these, please subscribe to get notified when I start posting videos of the next trip. I do have some special surprises planned for that trip. While I promise to keep visiting historical sites, I will stop a few places I have never seen a motor vlogger stop at, so come back and find out what they are. I'll drop some shorts and a few more trial runs between now and then. Please like and comment below, as it does help with my motivation to make these. Thanks again for joining me, and may you have travel and good fortune in your future.